Bright Path families. My name is Samaya Khadrak and today I'm here to answer a few questions for you. The only locations that were not served, we did not serve meals when we reopened was in Alberta and unfortunately we did have to adhere to very strict guidelines from health services and ministries of um, child care so unfortunately we weren't able to provide a meal service. Um, we did adhere additional costs and fixed fixed costs and sort of larger overheads when we did reopen with very limited capacity. So unfortunately, we are not able to uh, provide a discount for the families. Uh, but however, I can, I am able to confirm that effective tomorrow, uh, we are able to provide a meal service at almost all locations except for one location in Alberta. And unless that there was a location in Alberta that you were uh, you were at that never provided meals, so that will not be facilitated. But other than that, all of our new loca all of our locations will now be serving uh, the meal service. So we have created and provided our educators with specific training on how to set up their environments, how to ensure that even the invitations to play are spread across the room so children do not congregate and play with materials in a specific area, as well as um, materials generally for access are, are sort of distributed equally throughout the room so children are not collecting uh, into one, one group to get to blocks for instance um, and then secondly uh, we do have lineup options floor decals where the children are able to stand on uh, floor decals to give them a bit of a visual so we are guiding that practice again when they're leaving from inside to outside or outdoor to indoors uh, those floor decals are available for the children to line up and if they are being held, which means if there's feeding time, we have separating blankets or some kind of sheet between the educator as well as the child to ensure that the, the, there isn't any sort of contamination that may occur. As well as um, uh, teachers and educators are wearing masks all the time. Uh, and we are constantly supporting them with hand washing uh, practices and just role modeling sort of that, those health and safety hygiene, through, hygiene practices throughout the classroom. Just wanting to clarify that, yes, there are physical distancing guidelines in place. We are trying to minimize very, very close contact with the children. Uh, we have adapted sort of our programming uh, as well, where we offer connection, uh, uh, connection approaches. They've been adapted and tweaked and educators have been guided accordingly. However, if a child is upset and requires emotional or uh, even physical support, we will be there to offer that to them. The social and emotional part is a very key component of our curriculum and programming every single day. Uh, the educators make observations based on children's social and emotional needs, especially for children under two, that emotional support is absolutely essential and that's something that we have guided our educators to continue to support. Yes, there are connection techniques that pro probably we were utilizing previously. We have adapted them just to ensure there is a physical distance uh, possible when, when, when it is possible, but if a child is up Set, educators will be coming in to support the child's needs uh, obviously taking any safety measures or precautions like putting on a mask or creating a, a separation between them with using a sheet or, or something to support but your child will absolutely be supported uh, if they are having a bit of an emotional emotionally difficult time so we are following all health uh, regional protocols pr provided to us by our uh, regulatory authorities in all of our provinces. Uh, obviously, we have very strict health and sanitation practices. We've always had them in place. I think they're just a little bit more enhanced and we're more cognizant of everything right now, uh, even more so. But uh, all of the toys that would either be mouthed or used by children are placed into a bin that is uh, taken out of the classroom either throughout the day or even at the end of the day to, uh, to be sanitized in our sanitizers. If we do not have sanitizers on location, then we use a three-step three, three um, process that is provided by a provincial healthcare guidelines. Again, um, a very strict process uh, to ensure that uh, it is completely sanitary uh, upon return to the classroom. And um, all of the high touch surfaces are being wiped down every 30 minutes throughout the day and if there is a transition between groups uh, which is again very very limited right now we have uh, we are ensuring that the group transitions do not occur but in a case that it does occur everything is wiped down prior to the second group coming in so we're again outdoor classrooms uh, as well are being adhered to in a similar approach so everything is sanitized before a second group is to return uh, to, to to go outside
So for uh, wiping down tables and chairs, we're using, utilizing a wipe twice approach. So first it's washed down with hot and soapy water to remove any dirt and grime. And then it's sanitized by the approved uh, agent that's provided by our governing authorities in each of the provinces. So there is a sanit sanitization that's just uh, sprayed and wiped down uh, to complete the process.